Hi, welcome to Computing Foundations. This is a YouTube channel for beginners who want to learn about computers, programming, and the math, science, and art behind this world-changing field. I'm Josh Kilpatrick, a retired software engineer. So today we are going over a programming challenge that I gave you in the last video. The video was on arrays in the C programming language. So I'm quickly going to walk through the solution to the programming challenge. Uh, what was the programming challenge? Uh, well, our, our challenge was to take this program called 10-BadBaseball, which was used to represent the scores of a baseball game, and rewrite this program using arrays to make the program uh, more efficient, easier to read, uh, easier to write, and let's go over really quickly what happened in the bad program. In order to store, store nine scores for two teams, I had to define 18 different variables to hold the scores. And then I had to operate on these 18 different variables through the program. This ended up being a 100 line program. And this is what the output looked like. Uh, the scoreboard has two teams and there are nine innings, so there is a score for each inning for each team, and I'm printing it out after each inning. All right, let's take a look at the uh, results of my work to rewrite this program uh, using arrays. So here in the main function, the first thing I'm gonna do is define two arrays. Each of them is of size nine, because there are nine innings for each team. I've used this syntax to initialize the arrays. If you, if you do the curly brackets with just a zero, the compiler understands that you mean you want to initialize all of the elements of the array to zero. That's where you want to start. So by setting it equal to just zero, I'll get all of the variables set to zero. Next, I initialize my random number generator. I discussed that in our last video. You don't need to understand it, but it sets us up to be able to generate random scores. Now, I simply print out the initial scoreboard. This is a good moment to pause and take a look at how I rewrote the print team function. So I'm gonna call print team once for each team, team one and team two and I simply pass in the name of the array which holds the scores. Up here in my function print team, I print out the header of the scoreboard, then I print out the score for the first team which is innings zero. This is the first inning uh, sorry, I, I print out the score uh, for the team, of the first inning for the team. I'm just working on one team. Each time I call print team, I'm just working on one team. So I, for this one team, I print out the first inning, which is in innings sub-zero. Then I create a for loop that starts at one, because I've, I've already printed out the score for the first element. So that was in position zero. Now I wanna go from position one to position eight. So I'm gonna say I equals one. I is less than number of innings. Number of innings is a constant I defined at the top of the file. It is defined as nine because there are nine innings in the game. I didn't wanna repeat nine, nine, nine all over the program so I created a constant. Uh, this will cause us to loop from 1 to 8, and then I print out for each inning the current score by referencing innings sub i. So I take the i variable and I use it to create an index into my array innings. All right, so here we are, uh, line 53 and 50, sorry, 52 and 53. I'm printing out the initial scoreboard. Now I'm gonna set up a loop to loop through the nine innings, set a random score for each team, for each inning, and print out the scoreboard. So how do I do that? I, I simply print out, hey, this is the scoreboard for inning number i plus one. Why do I say i plus one? Well, remember, the array goes from zero to eight. 
but in human terms, I refer to that as inning one through nine. So I'm gonna increment i, I'm gonna add one to i so that when i is zero, I'm gonna to print to the screen, hey, this is for inning one. This is for inning one. So then for each of my teams, I reference the ith element, the i index, which is zero for the first run, and I set a random score. Then I call print team for both, and then I can exit the program. This program ended up being about 70 lines, so it's 30% shorter than the other program that we wrote. Um, I think that's incredible that we're able to use arrays, and even if the program isn't shorter with regard to the number of lines, it was a heck of a lot easier to write, it's easier to read, and it's much less error prone. So I hope you were able to solve the challenge, but again, if you weren't, don't stress. The important thing is that you tried, you struggled with the arrays a little bit, and now I've shown you a correct answer. You can compare that to what you were doing and see what you can learn. Uh, there's still a lot more left to learn, but arrays are a really important part of how you're going to become a great programmer. So spend some time on this, and if you have questions, please post them as comments on the video. It really will help me to know how to make these videos better for you guys. As always, thanks for coming and we'll see you in the next video.